So let's talk about electric charge. You know, that thing you create when you rub two unlike insulators together. Charge is one of the basic properties of matter because, you know, everything is made up of atoms and atoms are made up of charged particles. In fact, all electric and magnetic properties of matter would not exist without charge. In most formulas, we use letter Q to represent charge, but we actually measure it in coulombs, named after this guy who did a lot of experiments on charges and even came up with this formula, which is like super useful when dealing with charges. But here's the thing, if you've taken classes on electrostatics, static electricity, or even capacitors, you might have noticed that in calculations involving charge, we mostly deal with subunits of the coulomb, like millicoulombs, nanocoulombs, microcoulombs, picocoulombs, and so on. Why is it actually so rare to have a whole coulomb of charge in real life, but we usually deal with fractions of the coulomb? So to try and answer this question, let's go back to where the whole story of charge begins, back in the atom. From all we understand, atoms are made up of protons and neutrons in the center, what we call the nucleus, and this is surrounded by a cloud of electrons. Electrons are said to have the smallest possible charge you can ever attain. Every electron has a charge of about 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 19 coulombs, which is also called the elementary charge. Every other charge in the universe should be a multiple of this elementary charge because charge is quantized, and this was actually proved by this guy. So how big is one coulomb of charge? Let's begin by considering how many electrons make up one coulomb of charge. To do this, we'll get one coulomb of charge and divide it by the charge on each electron, 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 19, and this gives us about six quintillion electrons. To put this into perspective, this is equivalent to 1.23 times 10 to the power 14 football stadiums filled with electrons. That's assuming each stadium has 50,000 seats and each electron is seated in its own chair. So the point I'm trying to make here is that the Coulomb is practically big. This is a very huge number of electrons to actually have. Here's another example. Assuming I'm holding two charges, each with a charge of plus one Coulombs, one in my right hand and another in my left hand. Assume also that these charges are separated by a distance of one meter in air. How much force do I actually need to keep these electrons from flying apart, to keep them together at this particular distance? Now we can calculate this force using Coulomb's law and we find this to be 9 billion newtons of force. This is such a huge force to tear me apart even before I can blink. With 9 billion newtons, you can actually carry about 1,600 air buses. That's quite an enormous force just between two charges each of one coulomb, just to give you an idea on how big one coulomb of charge can be. One last reason is that most devices and components we use in everyday life, for example capacitors, they can only store a tiny amount of charge, and so it is much more convenient to use subunits of the coulomb rather than using whole coulombs when we are representing how much charge they store or their capacitors, for example. I mean, just think about the mechanical constraints of a capacitor that would store one coulomb of charge. You would need to have a very strong dielectric to keep the plates apart, or else you would need to have very large plates to distribute the charge over a wide surface area, and all this would make the capacitor almost practically impossible. Now, of course, I understand I'm only talking about parallel plate capacitors here. There are, of course, more modern and better technologies for making capacitors today, but I'm using this to hopefully illustrate my idea on why a Coulomb is rarely used or seen on devices, but rather its subunits. Alright, I hope this video gives you an idea on why you don't usually see the Coulomb in most of the calculations we do, including everyday applications of static electricity and capacitors. Now, there are applications like lightning and Van der Graaff generators where such enormous amounts of charge can exist, but these are very rare and not things that we practically deal with. So next time you do a calculation involving subunits of charge, I hope you have an idea where this comes from. Thanks for watching the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'll see you in my other video. Bye.